Hey there, honey bunnies. Welcome to episode 71 of the Sovereign Storytellers podcast with your host, Michelle Wolf. Website that michellewolf.com. Just get that right out of the way. I have a bunch of stuff coming up. And if you're following me on Facebook, pay attention on Saturday, February 1st, because I'm going to list the next free coaching event. Um, we are going to be talking about human design, forest reiki, compassionate honesty, and repairing the relationship with the body. So weight loss is mentioned, and also we all know that it, yes, it's about losing weight, and also it has nothing to do with any kind of diet, because we are done with diets, y'all. All right, I'm making dinner. You want to make dinner with me? <laughs> Would you like to know what's on the menu? It's bonza shells made from chickpeas, B-A-N-Z-A, with vegan mayonnaise and dill, salt, and pepper. <laughs> so I thought while I'm making dinner, I will chat with you and share some stuff with you. So if you were good in school, becoming an entrepreneur might be harder for you. And here's why. Your sense of self-worth was trained from an early age to um, be formed around the gold star, right? Behavioral, behavioral modification works for kids who do well in school. We love our teachers. We want that A. We'll work our ass for it. We love it when our teachers praise us. Um, school was my sanctuary, and I know for a lot of you, it was yours too. If you had a chaotic home life, um, one constant, no matter if you, where you moved to, was you probably went to school. Uh, and if you could earn the attention and the approval of the teacher, then you had that, you know, no matter where you went. Here's the problem with that. That makes for good grades, makes for nice... Um, you know, system of behavioral rewards in exchange for grades and pats on the head, uh, that doesn't serve you very well when you get out in the business world. No matter what that business is, whether you're selling jewelry or <laughs> whatever, whatever you sell, coaching, weight loss programs, human design readings, you know, when you're running your own podcast, when you're trying to sell yourself, when you're trying to serve clients, um, you don't get the same kind of, re there's not the same kind of reward system built in. And it really doesn't have anything to do with how smart you are. <laughs> Actually, when it comes to addictions and business building, the smarter you are, the harder it can be. Not always, but it does seem to be a theme. Okay, that water's boiling. Let's put the pasta in. This chickpea pasta better be good. I have to do gluten-free and I'm still doing vegan. So, going with the chickpea. Hopefully that's not too loud for you. Um, let's see how long to cook it so I don't overcook it when I get all distracted by talking to you guys. Nine minutes. Nine to eleven minutes. Okay, we're, we're set. So, I remember from kindergarten very much responding to the gold star and the grading system not, not that you got graded in kindergarten you know but I really wanted my teacher to like me and she did and I really worked hard for teacher approval and fortunately learning came easy I was an early reader except for math but everything was pretty easy for me in school. So then when you go to a job, it's the same thing, right? Show up, work hard, outperform everybody else. You just switch your approval seeking from your, or from your teacher to a supervisor and your you know, colleagues. Go back to school, earn some more gold stars, get another degree and another degree and another degree. So you can see that there's a type of person that has, you know, some people 
some people have like a mile long criminal rap sheet and some people have a mile or two long list of certificates and degrees and this is and that's because we're proving our self-worth over and over again. We need that dopamine hit of you checked all the boxes. You're a good doggy. You did the thing, but it doesn't last, right? Teacher approval doesn't follow you home. Supervisor approval doesn't do anything for you when the agency uses you up and spits you out because it's not on them to set boundaries. It's on you. It's not on them to make you go home after 40, 45 hours a week or whatever it is you're working. 45 is absurd. 40 is absurd. We need to be working you know, if we actually just did our job and didn't socialize so much, we could probably get away with actually getting everything done in 30 hours, 35 hours. But you know, that doesn't follow you home. Your teachers don't follow you home. I hope they don't. That's, that's a, that's a criminal charge. (laughs) That's, that's a felony. Um, you know, and then we go to college, we get another degree. We get our dopamine hits from achievement. So we just keep achieving. That doesn't help you when you need to be okay with your clients not liking you. It doesn't help you when you need to be okay putting your work out in the world. And if somebody rolls their eyes or if, you know, God forbid your family says something shitty to you. You know, the stuff that I hear from people, I never, my family's been always been supportive. They know I'm a crackpot. They know I'm out here winging it, doing all kinds of stuff. They, they're they used to it. <laughs> they're used to it. So they don't, nobody says anything. Actually, I get the opposite. I get support. So I'm lucky that way. Um, it's people who aren't family that, you know, I've perceived and some, sometimes I've heard some stuff from, but you know, you got to get comfortable with that. You have to be comfortable with posting 10 times in a row and not getting any traction. It takes a long ass time of posting, posting, blogging, doing all the things and shining your light before people start to find you. If you're, I mean, human design can speed that process up. But often it speeds it up because it shows you where you've been off track, that you're performing your ass off, but you're not getting the feedback that you're used to getting. And so then people give up. They don't take action. Well, I don't want to take action because my family's going to have something to say about it. Okay, then the entrepreneur, such a hard word. The business life might not be for you then if you can't get yourself past that if you can't get a good coach that can help walk you through unwinding why you're so upset that you aren't getting no gold stars you're working you're working 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 and you're used to all that workity work 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 getting you something and it doesn't always get you jack or shit It often gets you a whole lot of nothing because we don't get it that we're building momentum. It's this cumulative, not action reaction. We're used to action reaction. Do the thing, get the thing. Do the next thing, get the next thing. Do all the things, get a degree, get a gold star, get a diploma, get another certificate. I have enough certificates that if the zombie apocalypse happened, I ain't going to freeze. I got enough paper to burn to last me probably a year. <laughs> and that's not counting the digital ones. You know, it's simple. Behavioral modification. We have a brain that rewards performance. We perform. We get something. It makes us happy. We get our chemical bazinga. And then we, so we keep performing. That's why you can't laugh at a kid who does something dangerous, but it's funny. (laughs) Or when a two-year-old spits out some random string of cuss words, it's hilarious. But God forbid you laugh at it, because if you laugh, you've hit that kiddo's brain with some, with some, uh, you know, tasty brain candy chemicals. And there you go. Now they're going to be saying it all day long. You've had that experience, right? 
you've experienced that. You laugh at the wrong time with a kid, and then you're going to spend six months trying to undo it. We're no different, right? If we went to school and we had good school experiences, we had good experiences with achievement, external rewards, external locus of control, we adapt and adjust and form and conform our our behavior based on the external, external locus of control. Internal locus of control is coaching yourself off the ledge. I know it doesn't feel good when you've posted four times this week and you haven't made a sale or you're not, you're, you held a webinar and people aren't booking discovery calls. Keep going, keep going, keep going. You're not going to get your rewards that way. You got to learn to give them to yourself. Well, that's not satisfying <laughs> in the beginning because you're waiting for Mrs. King to give you the pat on the head and Mrs. King is retired and possibly dead by now. I'm old. I'm 50, what am I, 53? <laughs> I don't know if Mrs. King is still around. She was my beautiful, wonderful kindergarten teacher who I loved and adored. Still do. She was fabulous. So that shift from external locus of control to internal locus of control is rough. It helps you to see it, to go, oh, every class I get in, I'm trying to earn approval from the teacher. Every job I go to, I'm trying to, I'm working my butt off. Not because I so love the job, but because I'm so ingrained to earn the, um, the, the achievement to achieve in order to get my brain cocktail. I want to belly up to the bar and get the gold star special. Make it a double. Extra rocks. <laughs> you know? Is this sounding familiar? So this is why people like my dad, I think, who, you know, was born into a like a sharecropping family and they all picked whatever was available for picking and weren't allowed to go to school. They had to be in the fields. My dad didn't, I think he got to go longer than his siblings. And that was like sixth grade. I think he got to go till he was 12, but the rest of them might've made it to second or third grade. Like no joke. They were, as soon as they were big enough to drag a bag behind them in the fields, they were out picking stuff. My dad wouldn't eat sweet potatoes because they ate what they were picking. And one time that's all they had for a really long time. And he wouldn't touch them. But he wasn't trained to seek that kind of approval. You know, we all seek approval. How we do it, it's not a problem unless it's a problem. If you're trained for the gold star, it can be a problem when you're out here you know, winging it for yourself. Like my dad didn't have that problem. He would just go talk to people and market himself and it was not an issue for him. Keeping his success was an issue for him, but that was different. So when I was working with um, addiction, we had to talk a lot about that. So you have to let go of the gold star cocktail, your brain mix, and find a way to make your own, get behind the bar yourself, mix up your own cocktail of brain chemicals, which comes from you figuring out what feels good to you, what motivates you, what's going to keep you going when you're doing all the work and you're not getting any feedback positive or negative. A lot of times it's just silence, right? If you're a projector and you're working the way I used to work, you're getting nothing, <laughs> which really impacts your sense of self and your self-esteem because you're used to working your butt off and getting something for it. Okay. So I was telling my mom earlier today that that is what can make life pretty hard on addicts. Let's see if this post is done 
is because when you, I'm going to have to cook it longer. Um, when you eat or have sex or do human things, laugh with your friends, tell a joke and get a response. It feels so good to your brain. It, let's say you have a hundred percent of the reward chemical system that your that your brain is gonna like mix up a cocktail for you and you're gonna your brain's gonna drink it. Okay, the reward cocktail, the gold star cocktail. Let's say you have ten units of that happy mix available to you at any given time. And your brain only has to give you one, two, maybe three units of dopamine as a reward, and you're fine with that. Until you take a drug, or until you get a, per if you're a, a kid that's really needing attention, and you get a teacher who really just floods you with it, then your brain is pumping out look, double that. So the teacher would be like double. Then you take a drug and your brain is not only pumping out all 10 units, but it's dragging another five units from storage to dump in your brain. So when people are coming off of serious drugs, life feels flat, boring, dull. I mean, I've had people say, if this is what it's going to be like, I'm going back to the needle. Like that's serious. They don't want to, who wants to live a flat, boring, dull life? And they have to build in all these reminders and support systems. This is why you can't just go to rehab and quit in 28 days. They have to build in systems that remind them that your brain has to heal from that. Your brain has to relearn that it's okay to live a life where you're only getting one, two, three units of reward chemical mix. Your gold star cocktail is, it's okay if it's a shot, not a gallon. Okay, so that training process, first of all, you got to catch yourself. You have to catch yourself. What are, if you're posting and nothing happens and you're miserable, this takes a lot of self-honesty. I was calling it radical honesty, but I like calling it compassionate honesty instead. So I'm, I'm changing the language on that because compassionate honesty says, hey, honey, Benny, you're upset, not so much because you're not making sales, but you're not getting your big gold star cocktail. That's what's really going on here. That's why you take it personal. You know, if it wasn't personal and you were just learning how to do business, you'd be like, oh, well, that didn't work. Hmm. Oh, my ad campaign didn't result in anything. I wonder what I need to tweak. But I talked to a lot of people who take it so personal. And I used to also until I worked this through. It hurts. If it's hurting, that lets you know you're tapping into something that is in the past. There is some other meaning going on. A failed Facebook ad should not hurt your feelings. If I handed you a carburetor and said, if you can put this together, I'll give you a million dollars. But you're going to have to figure it out. I reckon you'd sit there and you'd try 400 ways to rebuild a carburetor. Even if you didn't know what one was. I'm assuming y'all know what a carburetor is. But I could be wrong. Not everybody grew up around cars. <laughs> okay, but you'd work it, right? And if you didn't get it right the first time, you wouldn't be hurt about it. It wouldn't hurt your heart that you failed 10 times to rebuild a carburetor, you would notice that every time you took it apart and tried again, you got a little closer. And that would be rewarding, right? You'd be like, oh, I got a little dopamine. I got a quarter of a gold star cocktail. Let me rip this shit apart and try again. You just keep doing it, right? It might even be fun. What? Fun? Are you kidding me? 
can you imagine your Facebook ad attempts being fun? It didn't work. Well, shit. What do I, what do I need to do? Let me evaluate. Let me ask for some feedback. Let me set my ego aside. Sorry, y'all got to rinse the strainer. Let me set my ego aside and, and get vulnerable and say, hey, what, what is wrong with my ads? Are they pushy? Are they bossy? Are they dumb? Are they not clear? Like, what's going on here? Y'all let me know. You wouldn't be like in tears over it. Like a lot of people are. Like I have been at times. The tearfulness and the hurt, heartbreakiness of it, that's what let me know. Like I'm in the past somewhere. This should not be hurting my feelings. It could be aggravating. It's cause for concern <laughs> if you keep spending money and you can't figure it out. But it shouldn't be hurting your feelings because you're learning something new, right? So if that's happening, if you're trying to build a business and you keep getting your feelings hurt, that's something to take a look at. What about that failure has echoes in the past where you got your consistent source of love from your teachers or approval needs or whatever it was you were getting met at school or through your behavior? It doesn't have to be at school. You did behavior that re was rewarded in a way that was deeply satisfying as a child. Right? So if your Facebook ads aren't working or your marketing strategy stinks <laughs> or appears to stink, right? Because nothing's happening and you're in tears about it. Not the normal frustration tears, but the I'm horrible and I can't, you know, no one likes me and my stuff is shit. You know, those kinds of hurting things, those hurting statements. That lets you know there is a lot of work to be done. And it's doable. M the biggest problem is catching yourself in tears because somebody didn't like your offer. Or in tears because um, you had a thing with a client. Or in tears because you start a new job and you don't know where the approval source is. You know, a lot of starting job anxiety is people don't know who's going to, who they can enact, you know, who they can play repetition compulsion games with. <laughs> oh, Freud. I'm not your fan, but I do like repetition compulsion patterns. They're easy to spot for me. I can catch those patterns pretty quick. In you, not in me. I... <laughs> I can't see my patterns hardly at all. It takes me a while. But I can see your patterns real quick. So take a look at that. When your system fails, air quote, there's no failure. Are you deeply hurt by it? Or are you like, you know what? If I can just rebuild this carburetor one more time, I bet I can have a six-figure year. Let me get going. Let me get some feedback. Let me take a course and actually do it, not just plow through so I can get the, the gold star cocktail of the certificate burst. <laughs> you know, <laughs> certificate, celebrate. Where's my gold star cocktail? Come on, brain, serve it up. You know what I'm saying? So when you give you, when you figure it out that you're reacting to the world now, as if you're still in school or getting your approval needs met, which is normal and appropriate at some point though, we got to grow up. <sighs> That's a bummer, isn't it? Sometimes <laughs> we have to grow up and we have to, um, find our internal locus of control. We have to provide our own re reward system. We have to provi provide our own motivation. And that doesn't mean you do it all in isolation. If you're a person that really benefits from accountability groups or accountability coaches, well then go find you one. Get in an accountability group. I have clients who sign up for stuff not necessarily because they actually need it 
or what what's being offered, but because they need the community. Of course, they still get stuff because, you know, but a large part of what they're getting is being in a group of other people doing the same work and trying so hard to wake up and stay conscious and get conscious and stay conscious and over and over. Okay. Okay. My dinner's ready and it looks delicious. So I'm going to stop here. Where are you at on that continuum? Did you do good in school? Did you get your rewards from work through achievement? Do you love nothing better than getting another certificate? And how do you feel when that doesn't happen? When you perform without an external reward? And starting to ask those questions and look at those things, like what is your level of hurt? If your business venture fails, you're going to have some, well, shit, that's disappointing. It might sting a little bit, but it shouldn't leave you a basket case of, you know, tears and laying around in your pajamas for a week watching The Office for the 500th time. Who does that? (laughs) The Office, Parks and Rec. Star Trek Deep Space Nine, <laughs> and the, lately The Expanse. How long do we have to wait for another season of The Expanse anyway? I don't know that I'm going to make it. <laughs> All right, if you need help with any of this, you know where to find me. Always I'm going to recommend you start with a Human Design Foundations reading. We don't call it basics because it's not. It is the foundation of everything. It's extremely powerful. It will change your life if you live it. ThatMichelleWolf.com. You can find me on Facebook.com forward slash MichelleWolf11. Remember to put those two L's and those two F's. And you'll find me. And then um, I post a lot of free stuff. A lot of free educational stuff. If you want to check it out. Think less. Feel more. I will talk to you later.